So we're going to look at uh, permutations and combinations. Um, and the difference generally is you're choosing from a group, a set of elements, a certain number of things. And what differentiates between a permutation and a combination is whether after you choose those things, um, the outcome is affected by the order in which you chose them. Um, that can sometimes be sort of hard to tell. Um, so I'm going to sort of walk through that process as we go through. So um, we're looking for how many ways these choices can be made. So in the first problem, in a class of 20 students, in how many ways can I choose three students to present the solutions to each of these three problems? So they're going to present these problems in front of the classroom or something. Um, and then, so what I want to ask is, is the order I choose the three students, does that change the outcome? And if you think about, you know, if I chose, you know, Alice and then Bernie and then Charlie, and Alice, Bernie, and Charlie each presented in order, that would be different than if Bernie went first and then Charlie and then Alice went. So that order in which the students are chosen does affect the outcome. The first student does the first problem, the second student does the second problem, and the third one does the third. So this problem represents a permutation. Um, and then we're going to do these two different ways. Um, there is a formula we could use, which is the number of permutations of n things taken r at a time. So this is how you would write it, p of n choose r. A lot of calculators have this, or Excel has a formula that we can use. Um, it's n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. So um, that's the formula, but usually if you're making a permutation, we can set it up as choices. You know, in, in our first choice of um, how many people do we have to choose from to begin with, well, we have 20 to choose from to begin with. And then we take one out, we don't replace it, so now we have 19 students to choose from. And then after that person is taken out, we now have 18 people to make for our third choice. And so we take that product, 20 times 19 times 18, that's the total number of ways um, that this can occur. So 20 times 19 times 18 ways. 6,840 different combinations, or different ways this can occur. Um, and then how, how does that work with this formula? Well, 20 factorial would be you know, 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 all the way down. Um, and then downstairs here, n minus r, that'd be 20 minus 3. So 20 minus 3 would be 17 factorial. So you have 20 times 19 times 18 in the numerator times 17 down, but 17 down is, is 17 factorial. So the 17 factorials are canceling, and we're up with this 20 times 19 times 18. And that's usually the easiest way to do it. Um, if we have a lot, a large set of numbers, we just use Excel to do it, and the number of permutations of 20 things, when we select three of them, we can type into Excel equals permute 20 comma three, and then it will compute it for us 6,840 ways. The next problem, we have 20 students. We want to know in how many ways can we choose four of them to help plan for the end of quarter celebration? So again, the question is, does the order I choose the four students affect the outcome, the people who are planning for the end of quarter celebration? Um, and in this case, you know, the order in which the, are, the students are chosen does not affect the outcome. The, whether I, I pick you know, Abigail, Bernie, Charlie, and David in that order, or in the reverse order, David, Charlie, Bernie, and Abigail, whichever order I choose those four students in, it's the same four students who are helping to plan the celebration. So when the order they're chosen in does not affect the outcome, that problem represents a combination. And we can do it manually. Usually we don't, I wouldn't suggest these too often to do manually. I would generally use Excel. 
Um, it's the same formula, except we're also dividing by a factor of r factorial. So in this case, we're choosing four students as opposed to three in the last problem. Um, so we would have 20 factorial, and then this n minus r would be the 16 factorial. So that would be, um, you know, uh, oh, I was going to write this out. That would be, we're writing it out. In the numerator, we would have uh, 20 times 19 times 18 times 17. You know, and really there's a times 16 factorial, but that's going to cancel out the initial 16 factorial over here from the n minus r factorial. And then times the r factorial, which is 4 factorial, or 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you can see the 16 factorial up here cancels that 16 factorial. And well, let's see what we get here. It's equal to put parentheses 20 times 19, 18 times 17, uh, divided by it's 12 times 2, 24. 4,845 ways that we can choose four of the 20 students to help plan for the end of end of quarter celebration. So that's solution one, the manual computation. Solution two, uh, don't know what just happened there, sorry. Solution two, using the Excel formula for combinations, uh, we're taking the combination of 20 things and we're choosing four of them. So that's a combination 20 comma four. And again, 4,000, we just plug that into Excel uh, formula equals combination 20 comma four. And there's 4,845 ways that can happen. Same answer. And this is usually much easier for combinations to use some form of technology. In the third example, um, we have a class of 20 students and we want to know how many ways can we elect a president and a vice president and then choose three additional members for a governing body? Um, you know, whenever things are going in sort of a first and second position, that is a permutation. So in this case, we have a president being selected first and then a vice president being selected second. So that clearly is a permutation for those two people. Um, for the remaining three choices, uh, we're, we're choosing a governing body. So when those three people are chosen, the order in which they're chosen in should not affect the outcome. So for the first two people, we have a permutation. For the second set of people, we have a combination. And for the total number of ways this can occur, we have to multiply those two things together. So this problem involves both. Um, both permutations and combinations. Uh, again, in selecting the president and the vice president, the order they are chosen in does affect the outcome. Hence, that represents a permutation. And the order the three additional members in are chosen in does not affect the outcome. Hence, that's a combination. And again, we'll multiply the two together to find the total number of ways. And that's an application of the counting principle. So I, I would just use Excel here. So we, we use Excel. Um, in the first permutation, we have 20 people, and we're choosing two of them, so that's a permutation. And then we're multiplying that by a combination, but we only have 18 people left. And from those 18, we are choosing three. So that's when we plug that into Excel, 380 times 816, or 310,080 ways. And then just to recap the three problems, um, and their solutions. I just took out the manual solutions and left it in the Excel format. So if you wanted to go back and review, this is how we would type these into Excel. Um, the, the work here is not getting the answer. The work really is determining whether you have a permutation or a combination. Um, and I don't, I don't imagine there would be a ton of this content. 
um, on our test, maybe at one problem. And then we will, we are going to use combinations in the next chapter in chapter four. So that's why we kind of need to introduce them here. So we have an idea of how that gets applied um, in the next chapter.